that is adding pain, that is adding whatever it is that the enemy has used to like to, to make you regret your life, praise God, to make you suffer on a daily basis, to make you cry on a daily basis. So, so today we are going to attack uh, one of the few curses that make life uncomfortable, that make life uh, a pain, that makes your life sorrowful, praise the Lord. We want to break that spirit of poverty. So today we are dealing with breaking the curse of poverty or destroying the curse of poverty or killing poverty in our lives. We are on the mountain, we are fasting and we are many and every prayer we pray together, it is powerful and by the grace of God. I want to believe God by the time we are through with these 70 days of fasting, you will have a testimony. You will testify that God has done something because you see, like I told you beginning the, of the year that the, the righteous of the Lord, they shall shine. They sh it, is, it is a very good year to those that fear the Lord. Praise God. Because in this dispensation, God is going to show the difference between those who serve the Lord and those who serve not the Lord. And because you will be counted among the number of those who serve the Lord, the curse of poverty, anything to do with poverty in your life must be broken. And let me tell you something. Almost every human being is attacked by this spirit of poverty. It is only the levels that make other people feel they are more comfortable. They feel like they are not in poverty because uh, the person who can pay their rent, pay their school fees and, he, and eat, they feel they are rich. And maybe in the start of their lives, they are struggling, praise God. But you see, the person who cannot pay rent, they know they are poor. The person who cannot, who can pay rent and not get food, they are struggling. But the one who cannot even pay rent, they think they are very poor. But each one of us, you may find the one who is paying rent but struggling to get food, they are still limited in the spiritual realm by the spiritual poverty. The one who can do all three, pay rent, uh, by, pay for school fees and buy food, you could find that they don't even have any extra coin to give to their neighbor. It means they are limited, praise mm -hmm. God. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So in this life, God has given us as a gift. He does not add sorrow to it. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and he has given us, he has given us the grace to receive all our needs being supplied from his hand, praise God. Mm -hmm. So I want you from whichever level you are at, even if you feel you are not poor, you're not struggling, you know, you're handling millions, you could be a billionaire. Praise the Lord. If you are handling what? Uh, thousands, you could be a millionaire. And if you, you are handling shillings, you know, you could be a thousand year. You could be somewhere in the next level. But it takes you uh, rising and shaking yourself from the dust. So I just want us to really focus and break the spirit of poverty, break the curse of poverty. Somebody cast your life, somebody cast your generation, and you have been struggling under that yoke of poverty. Jesus mm -hmm. prayed for that boy after he asked the father, how do you put up with this? How do you, how do you live? You know, because he was explaining, oh, you know, when the spirit comes, it is frozen in the fire, sometimes in the waters. Imagine every time you're fishing your son from the, side, from the sea, you are pulling him out of the fires and it's a spirit that is within him that is tormenting him, praise God. So this boy was a constant, a constant source of work. You have to look after him and you have to really look after him. You see, when he's crossing any river, you, you can't cross a river. What if you are thrown and you can't even cross with somebody who cannot fish you out? Are you seeing that responsibility? So he was really a burden to his parents. And when the father was explaining to Jesus, this is what happens to my son. He explained that journey until Jesus asked, how do you, how do you live? Praise the Lord. And then he told the disciples, some of this will not come out, but by prayer and by fasting. There's another level of poverty that you will not break through unless you give yourself to prayer, you surrender to prayer and you decide me, I am going to focus and I am going to look at this. Spirit. You know, you can kill a spirit, then deal with others. At least if poverty is dead, you can deal with, you know, late marriage, 
you, you, you know, you can wait for a wife, you know, peaceful, if you are, you are okay, you know, but you're not okay, you don't have a spouse, you don't have kids, you, you, you are still struggling in that situation, you become a very depressed person. So the Bible says, you know, money answers all things. Money, money, hey, money, money gives you title, money buys you favors, money buys you friendships, money makes your relatives who could otherwise despise you, respect you, praise the Lord. So I want us to focus and to kill this spirit of poverty. Where is poverty hiding in your life? I want you to command it to be shaken out of its hiding place, praise the Lord. You know, the habitation of poverty in your life should become desolate, vacant. You know, the, the, the tenants, that is poverty should be evicted. In fact, auctioned, praise the Lord, so that if it's a rat, if it's a cockroach, whatever it is, let the finger of God fish it out of your environment in the name of Jesus. So I want you to go before the Lord and ask for the grace and for the revelation of prayer. You see, at times you can start praying about something. Eh? If you just close your eyes and you start focusing, I am against you, cast of poverty. I break you in the name of Jesus. Believe in me. At that point when you're praying like that, the Holy Spirit will start reminding you curses that you acquired, that you did not imagine, connect them with poverty. You see, there will just be flashes the Holy Spirit will bring into your memory things that people spoke. You did not even put them into consideration, but they brought poverty in your life. God will, will enlighten your spirit, will just like, you know, a bulb will light in your spiritual eye and you will see clearly this is poverty coming from here. But you see, sometimes people curse us and we don't even connect. We don't join the dots. We don't know if this person is cursing us. But if you could be spiritual, you can pick a curse 10 miles away. You can, you can listen to somebody who is cursing you, even when they are arguing and kissing you, and you will pick it. But there are things that just passed you. You didn't pick. So as you're praying, what is this power that is limiting you? When you are almost getting promoted, the curse of poverty comes in, and you are sucked, and you go and you begin afresh. When you're almost settling there, the curse of poverty moves in. When you're almost starting that business, the curse of poverty moves in. So we want to break this curse in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something about a curse. A curse is that word that has been spoken, you know, backed by demonic anointing that is waging war against something in your life. So if you are saying the curse of poverty, this one is waging war against prosperity. Any iota of mind in your life, this curse is militating against it. And guess what? This curse, as long as it is not broken, mm. it will remain alive. I don't know if you got me. Mm. I am saying that curse, as long as it is not, it doesn't matter how many tongues you use. You can pray with angelic tongue, Italian tongues, Hebrew tongues. You can pray. You can pray in Kao if you are a Luo. You can pray in Kimasai if you are a Mkamba. It does, you pray your tongues. Eh? If that caste is not broken, it is still there. Why? Because you see, Christians, we are refusing to handle these things, thinking that they will just walk away. Sonia. They will just disappear. If we don't deal with them, if we don't talk about them, they will one day we just wake up and we find that we are cast free. It's a lie. Whatever prosperity you have right now, and you have never, never, ever dealt with any powers that are limiting you, you are still limited in that capacity. You may not notice it because you are okay. But if you are careful and you are diligent enough to really focus and deal with some of these curses, then you would be higher than where you think you are. You know, our problem is, we, we are okay with very little. Mm. We, are, we don't want to go very far. And I think it's because somebody lied to us and said, uh, Jesus had no home. Mm -hmm. You see, and it's a lie. Mm. Because even if Jesus told these people, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head, remember his house in Capernaum, where they removed the roof. That was Jesus' home. It had a roof, praise God, mm. that people would climb and bring somebody down and it was full. It was, it was containing not three people, not 10, 
If they were turned, then these people would just say, move, move, move. And they were in the house. They were not outside, praise the Lord. So Jesus had a home, praise the Lord. He was the son of man. He knew how to fish money out of the fish. He was rich. He was not poor, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. They were fighting for his garment. He was wearing the best of his time. I've never seen somebody who has been mob justed like Jesus. People fighting for his garments, bloody garment. Who wants to remove a garment from a thief and wear? But the one that Jesus had, after they flogged him, they've dragged him. He has carried the cross falling down. He, he was bleeding. He, he was sweating. He was dirty. That garment, they were fighting for it. I, I don't think they were fighting for rags. Praise the Lord. So anyway, I just want us to go before God and ask for the grace to pray and the grace to receive a revelation in your life. I want you to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your life. Some of you, you start sleeping when we start praying. Some of you, your mind becomes foggy when we start praying. Some of you, you just go into a comatose. You know, you go into an induced coma, spiritual coma. When we are praying, you are, you, are not, you are not thinking, you don't want to think. May you receive the grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are asking for the grace to pray. We are asking for the grace and the anointing that enables people to pray. We are asking for the spirit of prayer, the baptism of fire to pour on each one of us in the name of Jesus. Right. And the people will later on listen to this uh, someone, this prayer meeting Jehovah in the name of Jesus Christ as they join us. May you be glorified. May you be exalted. May you be magnified. Oh, remand release that grace of prayer in the name of Jesus. We receive it in our lives. We receive it in our lives. Touch our minds, oh God, that we may receive understanding. Open our eyes that we may see your glory, that we may see what you're doing in our lives, oh God. Open our ears that we may hear your voice in the name of Jesus Christ. Release that baptism of fire, oh God. Anoint our tongues let us speak fire in the name of Jesus. Let the words that we say come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Be exalted and be magnified. Remo zenta reba soko tena remaya. Robo shandala babaya. Restore the glory of the church in our lives, oh God. Restore the glory of the church in the name of Jesus. Rema zeke tena zote rebea. Restore that power, Jehovah, my God. Anything the church has lost to the enemy, King of glory, restore us as we pray. Restore us as we seek your face in the name of Jesus Christ. Be glorified, O oh Lord. Be exalted in our lives. Be magnified in our lives. We worship you, King of glory. We receive the mantle of fire. We receive the anointing, King of glory to call upon your name and the grace of King of Kings to call upon your name. For you are worthy, O God. You are worthy. You're worthy, O King of Kings. You're worthy. We praise you. We give you praise. We give you glory, mighty God. We give you praise. We give you glory, mighty God. We say like Abakub Jehovah, we have heard of your fame and we are afraid of God. Come and glorify your son, Jesus Christ, in our lives. Holy Spirit, glorify Jesus in our lives. As we seek you in fasting and in prayer, glorify Jesus. Glorify Lord Jesus in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus, we praise you. Reba sonde katala baba, rebo bozia mateke rebea, rabe bozeke tana mazoti borama zaya, rebo boshande kala mazori ya mama zente rebe, matoro bozeka ya naraya. In the mighty name of Jesus, I break the curse of poverty over my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I break the curse of poverty. Over my life, Shereba na mazekerebea, reketia na mazoko roboboya mazekerebea, reme mezeketabaya, matoli mazekerebea, 
Makoroboboya mazekerebeya, zekerebeya mazotoroboya. I break every cast of poverty in life, every cast of poverty in life, every cast of poverty in life. I'm <laughs> 
Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus. Come out of my legend family. Come out of my legend family. Spirit of God, come out and die. Come out and die. You cast of poverty. Amen. Amen. When uh, this session is over, we 